Hey, you know, let's look together at uh, something that I think you will find interesting, and we'll finish it up next week. We'll, we'll, we'll kind of look at the human mind, how your mind has been programmed. I was watching television yesterday, and I, I turned on a, a religious program, and I was watching a, uh, a, a Dr. Kennedy, uh, James Kennedy. Come on, send your uh, chairs waiting for you here. I was watching Dr. James Kennedy, and he was talking about the New Age, and he had a lot of problems with it. He said, because he said it is really taking up with psychology, and as a result he was insinuating that when you get involved with psychology, you kind of come against Christianity, which is true. And what he said really shocked me. First of all, he's, he's a very distinguished looking man. He's an eloquent speaker, beautiful speaker. Um, he has a magnificent church setting with uh, everything that, you know, it, it, just, it just had credibility all over it. I mean, it was a, a magnificently beautiful place. But what I saw there actually was I saw people being programmed. Because what he said was this. He says, you know, a lot of these people today in this, in this psychology, they'll say to you that you are gods. And as such, he said, the problem is, where does this originate from, the fact that you are gods? He says it originates from Satan. He says Satan was the first one to say you are gods. And he said to Adam and Eve, if you'll do this, you will be like God. And so he says that this type of a thing which brings psychology together and gets people to think that they have this position as gods is from Satan. And so then I thought, well, gee, you know, this guy is really a credible speaker. He's extremely distinguished, has all the credentials from all of the great universities. He's speaking in this magnificent place with all of the uh, surroundings. And very few of those people were ever going to look really into a Bible to check anything. And so they all walked out of there with their minds programmed that this philosophy of believing that you are gods is satanic. He had, he, had, he had done this, and he had to do this in order to protect the system. He has to do this in order to protect the traditional system of religion. But what I want you to do, I want you to open those little Bibles that I've given, or that you have out here, and I want you to open to page 876. And if you open to page 876, the rest of you go to the book of John, and I want you to look at something in there that Reverend Kennedy and all of his eloquence failed to note. And this is John chapter 10, okay? John chapter 10. And if you go with me, you'll go to verse 34. And there you'll see the words of Jesus Christ. And what does he say? Is it not written in your law, I said, you are gods? And if he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, the scripture cannot be broken. So it wasn't Satan who said you are gods, it's Jesus Christ who said you are gods, but the eloquent Christian preacher on television with thousands, millions of people watching him neglected to tell people that this was said by Jesus. He said, oh, it's said by Satan, because the point is if you don't realize that you're a god, and if you think you're a sniveling sinner as religion tries to burden you with, then of course you will continue to reach out to the system instead of reaching into yourself. Now, Let's go a little further than that. And there's a, there's a statement in the Bible that's in the Old Testament that is directed to you. And watch this and try to understand it if you can. Go to page um, 506, and at that you'll go to the book of Psalms. Book of Psalms, and go to Psalm 82, page 506. And this is, quote, unquote, God, whatever that is, speaking. And uh, God says in uh, Psalm 82, verse 6, I have said, you are gods. And all of you are children of the Most High, but you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. So what do I have to do so I don't die like men and fall like one of the princes? Look at verse 8. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for you shall inherit all nations. See. So that's what we're here really to talk about. You have been conditioned, your mind has been conditioned, 
and for all of the years that your mind has been conditioned, you have reacted, and you have suffered, and we'll show you how. And, and you know, conditioning is an interesting thing. Gina, come here for a second. I want to introduce everybody on television. I want to introduce everybody on television all over the United States and Canada. The young lady used to be my secretary. This is Gina. Okay. Now, will you just tell me, do you know how to spell spot? I mean, do you know how to spell? Do you know how to spell spot? Yes. How do you spell spot? S-P-O-T. Spot. Now, will you spell it five times? S-P-O-T, 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 S-P-O-T. What do you do when you come to a green light? Go. <laughs> <laughs> good. All right. Good. Good. And, 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 and no, come up, come up for a second. <laughs> I would be secretary. I wouldn't get that wrong. <laughs> Ninety-nine people out of a hundred will say stop. stop. Okay. And, and you did good, but you know, how did, what, 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 why were you thinking that? Just. I was just concentrating on getting it right, but <laughs> if I was going with the flow of things, I would have said stop. Okay, good. See, what, what, what she did then, would, and that's why she's sitting here, because then I've known her for a long time, and one of the things that she has done in her life has worked to break the conditioning. That's why. And she'll, in October the 21st, she'll be up there with us to see Kataro. We're breaking the conditioning. We're looking for something new. But it's true that if you condition people, and 99 people out of 100, if you say, you know, SPOT, 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 and then say, what do you do when you come to a green light? They'll say, stop. Okay. Okay. But it's because the mind is conditioned, and, and that's what we'll look at tonight. Our conscious mind is the only entity on the face of the earth that remembers its beginning and looks forward to its end. The only one. And, and what happens basically in our lives, you know, we, we become like a puff of smoke, don't we? T take a look, there's a fellow's hat hanging on the wall. Was, was quite, quite, a, quite a character, quite a young man, that, that black hat. You can't see it on TV. The black hat hanging on the wall is kind of a memory of, of somebody that came through this church, very strange young man, had all kinds of difficult encounters with the law and, and died in an automobile accident. And basically, his horror of his life was because of conditioning. Everything, everything was programmed into here, how he would react, you know. And, and he tried desperately. And in fact, we worked very hardly, hard with him. And the conditioning was beginning to change. And then something happened. We'll get into that in another time. But basically, all of us then, what are, we, what are you trying to do? You're trying to figure something out in your life, aren't you? I mean, because after all, what, what's your purpose here? What, what, what reason do you have? And the thing is that we're always trying to figure out next week or next month or what we're going to do, and yet we don't even know for what. What's the purpose of it? Where are you going? You know, when you think if you, you, know, you want security and then you're living like a flea on a tennis ball going through the universe at 40,000 miles an hour with nobody driving it, you know, where's your security? Where are you going to go? And uh, consider why you are the way you are. Why is Rose the way she is? Why is Don the way he is? Why is Albert the way he is? Why is Margaret the way he is? The point is you think the way you do out of habits. It's habit. That's why you are the way you are. You think the way you do out of habit. And habits are thoughts which dig themselves deep into the subconscious. Thoughts that are like seeds, and they burrow themselves deep into the subconscious. And when they are ready to blossom, those negative thoughts which have buried themselves deep into your subconscious will one day blossom into tumors. Here? One day, those thoughts which have buried themselves deep into your subconscious will blossom as tumors or some other kind of disease. And all of the festering that goes on in our minds, all of the festering that comes out through the subconscious, all of the hate which resurrects itself and grows out of the subconscious, we call tradition. Oh, even your parents said, why do you think the way? Because you do. That's why. Huh? Did you ever ask your father, why? Because I said so. <coughs> and you know what? Many years ago, he asked his father why, and his father said, because I said so. Nobody ever has said why. It's just because. It's tradition. It's the way it's done. 
Go to page uh, 792 in the little Bibles and look at Matthew chapter 15 and what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 15. Page 792. And in verse 6 he says, And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus you have made the commandment of God of no effect by your tradition. You see, Jesus Christ had contempt for tradition. He had contempt for religion. He had contempt for everything that the system uh, holds valuable and wonderful. Let it all fall down, he said. Let it all tumble down. He said, oh, what beautiful churches. He said, nothing but a pile of rocks. Let it all fall down. Because he had contempt for the tradition. But here's the point that you've got to understand. And this is the most magnificent thing of all. Inside of you is the power and the energy to take us all above all the negativity of these deep thoughts which are burrowed into our subconscious. All of the negativity which produced the hurt, all of the negativity which produced the disease and the violence, inside of you is a power to take you above that. But you know what? Right now, your traditional thought patterns have you firmly locked in the lower. You're locked in the cellar. And there's a deadbolt lock on it, and very few of us know how to get the key to open the door to let all of that crap out. Very hard. Because, you know, it's important to understand something. The same power that brings bad fortune brings good. It's not a different power. There's only one power. It's not a question of the power. It's a question of how you use the power. Look at me. Understand something. What, cho what choice do you have but to take what I say to you? What, where are you going in your life? You're getting older. Things start to run down. Where are you going? What's your direction? What are the possibilities? If you start to take into you what Jesus said, what Krishna said, what Buddha said, what I'm saying to you, if you take into this, then the future is unlimited. The possibilities are, are, are astral. Otherwise, you know what your future holds. If you take into yourself what the religionists tell you, then you can look forward to something supposedly happens at a golden gate after you die. Nothing now, after you die. If you take this power, which is electrical power, and you put it into the hands of an electrician, you put it into the hands of somebody who studies the power, understands the power, then they can light up the world. You put it in my hands, and I'll burn the building down in five minutes. Why? Because I don't understand the power. It's not the power is evil. It's when you touch the power, and you don't understand what it is that you must use it. So a person can use an automobile to drive to visit somebody at the hospital or to bring chocolates to their aunt who lives in Chicago. Another person can use the same automobile to rob a bank. It's not, it's not the automobile. It's those who are using it. And you know, that's why, if you look with me, and I, I forgot to write the page down, so somebody tell me where it is. Isaiah 45. What page is that on in the, in the little Bibles? Isaiah chapter 45. 609, page 609, okay? Isaiah chapter 45, and look what it says, something that I, I, very few Christians have ever seen, very few religionists have ever seen, but God makes the statement in Isaiah 45, verse 7, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. God creates evil. How? Atomic energy. It can light millions of homes. The same energy misused can kill millions of people instantly. So what's being said is the power is given unto you. How you use the power will either make it good or make it evil. And, and the unfortunate thing is, let's say if all of us were to go down to the nuclear plant here in Oyster Creek tomorrow and go to work there, and we'll take over the place. <laughs> <laughs> the same power that is lighting our building here now would all of a sudden erupt into streams of people flowing out of the county. <laughs> Planes, everybody going in opposite directions because Ethel is in charge of the nuclear plant. 
here is the nuclear scientist that is taking over. Nothing to worry about. Oh, oh, oh. Here we go. Do we have a present for you? Okay. So what are we talking about? It isn't a different power. The power hasn't changed, but all of a sudden, people who are putting their hands on the power are doing it, and they have no idea how to use it. And so basically, then it becomes the same power that is good suddenly becomes evil. Okay. What you have here <coughs> are the conceptions that you have. What do you think of yourself? The conceptions that you have of yourself are locked in what is called the subconscious mind. That's the subconscious mind. The conceptions that you have of yourself are, the, are locked in here. And the only way to change you is if somehow a key can be found to unlock that door and let that stuff out. Otherwise, everything sits in there and festers in there and causes you big problems. I would suggest to you, if you really want some time to get a little good study on this, go into a bookstore, a Dalton bookstore, Waldman Books or something. Pick up a book written by Carl Jung. Carl Jung, spelled J-U-N-G, who was a contemporary and a partner of Sigmund Freud. And it's a book called The Undiscovered Self. You're not reading a new age. You're not reading a preacher. You're not reading a religionist. You're not reading a screwball. You're reading one of the most eminent psychoanalysts that ever lived on the face of the earth. And he'll tell you about the subconscious mind. And there is nobody with better credentials to talk about it than Carl Jung. But so where's the key? Where is the key for everything that your parents have put in there that was wrong? Where's the key for everything the church has put in there that is wrong? Where's the key for everything that, that the government has put in there that was wrong? Where's the key everything that your friends have put in there that is wrong? And all of that stuff is festering in there. Take a look at page 847 in your Bible. Go to Luke chapter 11. <clears throat> Luke chapter 11, page 847 in your Bible. And then Jesus says in Luke chapter 11, verse 52, Woe unto you lawyers, he's talking biblical scholars, you have taken away the key of knowledge. Why? Because you entered not in yourselves. And them that were entering in, you hindered. In other words, what Jesus Christ just said, by entering within yourself, you take the key to unlock the door and let all of this hurt out. But right now... It's locked. And everything is... And if you study Carl Jung, you study Sigmund Freud, you'll find this is the location of your problem. And you don't even know that. Because the subconscious mind is the key. Do you know what the subconscious mind does? It never sleeps. When you dream, you dream out of the subconscious mind. It never sleeps. It never forgets. It remembers everything that you've forgotten. It never forgets a thing. And a psychiatrist can take your subconscious mind right back to the beginning. Sometimes you walk down a street and you smell something. Instantly you're transported back to maybe your aunt's house or your grandma's house or something. And all the people surround you. You can feel the house. You can feel everything. You can see leaves on a lawn, on a front lawn, or the smell of the water hitting the grass at night. And you're back somewhere many, many years ago. And because it's all stored here, it's never forgotten. Everything you've ever heard, everything you've ever learned, everything that's ever been told to you is accepted as fact and stored in the subconscious mind. The most powerful instrument in the universe is the subconscious mind. The conscious mind is only 10%. And the thing is that everything that goes into the subconscious that causes the problem comes from the conscious. Somebody tells you something. It goes in there, and it, and it finds a place to dwell and grow in there. Somebody teaches you something. Somebody frightens you. It all goes from here, your conscious mind, and then it goes into the subconscious mind. And when it goes into the subconscious mind, you forget it. But your subconscious doesn't. So <laughs> a situation happens. 
See, this is, this is only 10% of, this is the key of tithing. This is why God said it is so important that you tithe. I need you to give that 10%. I need you to turn that off because as long as you leave this active, all of the fear, all of the hate, all of the discouragement, all of the depression is going to come flying in here and root itself in the Garden of Eden. And the Garden of Eden is going to be filled with weeds and all ugly things growing in there. This here conscious mind has good things. You help people with it, don't you? I mean, sometimes you say, I'm gonna, they're going to help the people with Hurricane Andrew. That's coming out of the conscious mind. That's a good thing. It has a lot of bad things. And it's called in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And it says, don't eat from that tree. Go to Eden at the east, to the right side. Eat from there. But this here, first of all, has to be reprogrammed now. We'll, we'll, get in, we'll, we'll get into that. See, because who's the servant here? Look at the size of the subconscious mind. Look at the size of the conscious mind. And the fact is that the servant is the subconscious. The master is this little insignificant conscious mind. The tiny little conscious mind is the master. And this is the amazing thing. The greatest power in the universe does exactly what it is told by the little insignificant 10%. It obeys everything that comes from here. And if you tell this that you're sick, it will fester, it will find a root, and it will blossom into a little tree of sickness, and it will grow. Because it believes everything you tell it. And in the same way, if you tell it you're not, you can then start on your way of life. What does it mean? Lie to it! <laughs> lie to it! Tell it lies! I really do feel good. <laughs> I really feel great. <laughs> You're snotting and snorting all over the place. Tell it! It doesn't know any different. It says, hey, what's all that noise? He says he feels good. Okay. And all of a sudden, things start triggering out of the subconscious mind. This is where visualization comes from, from Dr. Bernie Siegel. This is where visualization comes from Dean Ornish. They're telling something that really isn't true, and the subconscious mind thinks it is true, so the subconscious mind starts doing things as as if it is true, and all the hormones start flowing. It doesn't know the difference, see? It doesn't know that it's not being told the truth, so it starts reacting. So now you can see why something has to happen. Look at page 928 in the Bible. Look at the book of Romans. Go to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. This world is right over here on the left side, folks. It's the conscious mind. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In other words, what this here is, is a computer, and you've got to put in a new floppy disk. You've got to reprogram it. You can't change it. You can't go to your computer and lay hands on it. You can't go to your computer and read the Bible to it. You can't go to your computer and sing Amazing Grace. You've got to reprogram it. And the most magnificent computer in the world is sitting right between your ears. And you've got to reprogram it because it is filled with information. It is filled with coded messages. And these things are growing into the things that are torturing you and causing you the problems that you have in your life. The problems in your life and in my life are not being caused by anything out there. They're being caused by everything in here. And it's been stockpiled. Nobody wants to be subjected to the negativity. Nobody wants to be subjected to the hurting. Nobody wants to be subjected to the, to the sickness. But yet, the point is, we don't even realize that behind this veil is the answer to all of that, to ridding ourselves of all of that. The mechanism. But you see, the point is, you say, why do I hate this job? It's been ordered for you to hate that job from in there. It's not that you, you're told to hate it. It's programmed in there. Why doesn't anybody like me? Why don't I like anybody else? It's all programmed in there. Behind this veil are orders that come out of the subconscious that dictate to your con exactly what you're going to do. You've placed it all in there, and now it's all going to come back to you. This is the way it's going to be. 
and we, we get very unhappy. And then what do we do when we're unhappy? We make everybody else unhappy. You know, sometimes when the nurse is miserable. <laughs> do you realize how unhappy that makes me when the nurse is acting up? Huh? You know what I'm talking about. You get in your house. Thank you. See, you this is your, come on, this is your opportunity. Who's been so unhappy the last couple of days? I got sick. <laughs> I got sick. You cooked the other night, remember? <laughs> I cooked things to make you better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I had a little virus the last few days, and you know. And was he miserable? Well, and I was miserable. I was, I was miserable. And, and, and this is what happened. The nurse made me some, what was that? I made that? you chicken and sweet potatoes, the two best things for your stomach. And it, it drove me right into the men's room, didn't it? <laughs> No, you've been That's in there for the whole day. That's huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but tell about when we were away um, and I was in the spa having a good time. What happened to you with oh, the people was... next to us and how Koo worked with you? Yeah. Well, that's true. Okay. I yeah. will. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> We, well, we were, the, the nurse was down at the spa, and she submits herself to all of this insanity. You know, they put mud on her and leaves on her and <laughs> they massage her. She, goes, she doesn't miss any of this stuff. She swims under and out and all of this stuff. So I had an, the afternoon off. I said, you know, I was really tired. I didn't feel like it. So I said, I just got to go back and I just lay down. Here I am in the mountains in a, in, a, in a nice condo, all by ourselves in the mountains. You know, gorgeous up there near Action Park in Vernon, New Jersey, and we were near that. Well, all of a sudden I wake up and boom, bang, and I hear some guy screaming, "Get the! I won't use the word out of here. I'm trying to scream and throwing things, crash up against the wall." You know, I'm like. Back here. here I am in the mountains. He's all alone without you. Right? Yeah. I say, here, this must be the subconscious mind. And what the heck is this? I mean, I, I could just be in the, I'm on vacation. It's the mountains. I mean, you can't do this in this nice place. The people in the spa are going up and down in the water. What is this? And all of a sudden, I look out, and I hear this screaming and fighting and kids yelling. And I look out, and there's two cops standing on the stairs. And I got this guy. And then I look out the front door, and I got this blonde girl up against the police car. And then I'm looking out for the nurse, because I forget she's going to walk right into the middle of this thing. Make a long story short, they carted this guy off, they carted the blonde off. And it was, a, you know, but what had happened there, and this is amazing, because whether it had been because I was sleeping, but as soon as it hit me, it transported me back to my own life as a child. Because that's what I lived in. My whole life was like that. You know, my father committed suicide. I don't know if I told you the story. I, I discovered his body actually hanging from a, in a doorway when I was 14. But our whole life was, you know, I mean, my mother chasing him with a knife and uh, people. I mean, it used to be like Dodge City. I had brothers they used to fight. They'd tumble through banisters. And I mean, this was really wild. So when I, when I woke up and, and I heard this, I just was transported right back. So basically, when Jones says coup, what lies in the invisible subconscious, Buddha calls coup. If anything activates that or stimulates that, it comes into what is called key. It all of a sudden manifests itself. And it's really, it, it is really true. And you, you, you test it. You know where you've had situations. Sometimes you call them deja vu. All of a sudden, see, I feel like I've been here before. What the heck is this? Something has come out of here. Something triggered in your subconscious and you had this physical feeling that you, know, you were back to where you had originally been. But when this unhappiness comes, you, know, you wonder sometimes, why do I feel the way I am? Why am I acting the way I am? Because it's triggered from deep within your subconscious mind. It's resting there. And you don't even know this. That's why I encourage you to get the book by Carl Jung. Because you know, to listen to me, you know, what the heck am I? Or to listen to some preacher, what is that? But listen to a man who is a psychoanalyst of the highest credentials talk about this thing here and what it is. This is that atomic plant. If it's not handled properly, it is an atomic bomb that will kill millions. If it is handled properly, it is the power of the universe to set the universe free. Oh, wait, come on now. Come on. Come on, get up, because there's people in front. But when this happened to you, you didn't even realize it. You know, you just got so upset and so mm. nervous, and all of a sudden, he's down the spa looking for me. Well, I went a half hour over in my treatment, and I come out, and he's like going around every, where is she, where is she? Well, like, was, he was, he was You know, the funny thing you know? was, I, I went into a panic, and I started yeah. to, to try to protect her. 
from going back up there. It, but it was all my experience because yeah. I knew what the results were of that because I'd lived that, you know, all my life. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. All right. Um, let, let, let's go on and just look at, uh, at the point here. All of these troubles, and you, you have to know, each one of you in your life, what the troubles are. Enter your subconscious from your conscious mind. They come in. Here's, let's say, an unwanted child. An unwanted child has all of this that's told to him, filter in here, find its way into the subconscious. He grows. He's forgotten about it. It's not forgotten here. And what you have now is the makings of a killer. What you have now is a serial killer. You have a rapist. You have a violent, antisocial person. Because of all of the hurt that came in at his subconscious at a very early point in his life, found its way deep as a seed, and now it grew. And whatever stimulated it, it burst forth into a horrible flower of killing and raping and pillaging. Not because this person is necessarily bad, not at all. This person doesn't even know. This person doesn't even know the connection. And, 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 the, and the law, for the most part, doesn't know the connection. Oh, this is a horrible person. We, kill. we never go back and, 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 and make a fine or do anything bad to the people that actually put the fear and the hurt and the guilt and all the terror into that subconscious mind at a very early age. In other words, when you scream at your kids and when you program all of this negativity into the minds of children, it's going to grow and it's going to come back. Fear of the unknown. Yes. Exactly what it is. Because you've forgotten the whole thing. Your conscious mind forgets it. Oh, he's a rapist. Why? He's a serial killer. Why? Does all these horrible antisocial things. Why? Everybody forgets. Nobody remembers because it's not remembered over here. But remember, whatever negativity, whatever horror you put into the mind of a child or anybody else is never forgotten in the subconscious mind. Never. There was a story of a lady that she got married and she would go to the kitchen and whenever she would cook a meal she'd get a violent headache and and they couldn't figure out you know they did all of the tests on her they did brain scans on her all these types of things there was nothing wrong with her and so she went to a psychiatrist and the psychiatrist took her back in a past life regression or whatever it was took her back to the time she was a little child maybe two or three years old and found out that her mother was holding in her in her arms and her mother was cooking something and the stove exploded and the child dropped on her head. She had forgot, she didn't know anything about that. And so what happened? The subconscious triggered. Every time she went to the stove and she started cooking on the stove, the subconscious triggered this fear and a headache. And how was it found out? It was found out by a psychiatrist take, delving deep into the subconscious mind to see, you know, what had happened when she was a little child. Something that was long ago forgotten here. Do you realize what I'm telling you? Do you realize that each one of us then, all of a sudden, is going to start to have some kind of antisocial, antipersonal behavior, and we're going to say, I don't know what's the matter on I People, what the heck's the matter with this person? Nobody's going to remember, nobody's going to be known that that seed which had buried itself deep into the subconscious. Yes, sir. Yeah, so many times. Can you stand the, up, please? So many times the psychiatrists have said, "Act out your anger, the anger that you have locked inside that you're suppressing," and this is what rapists do. They act it out. They're sociopaths, is what they call them, and they have anger that's held there inside. And all their lives, a lot of people hold that anger, but that's a carnal type of anger they're asking you to release. It's not into the subconscious that Bill's talking about. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. The, 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 the point that he's making, I, I think, and I hope he's making, is. No matter what you act out, will only change it for the moment. There has got to be deep, metaphysical, spiritual, Christ type of, Buddhic type of work to reprogram this. We've got to go with Jesus and take that key. And this stuff has got to get out of here. And the only way you can get that out of there is by opening the door up here and allowing that, which is the higher divine mind, to start pushing that and pushing that out until finally it's gone. It won't work any other. There's no other way to do it. Because no matter how much even counseling you get, as long as that door is locked, all of that stuff is staying in there. And, that, and, and that's the problem. See? Many people fail constantly. Maybe you're one of them. Everything you, everything you try to do, you know, it, 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 nothing works. Poverty's always at the door. And, and what's programmed? The, curry, the, the code buried deep in your subconscious from your parents, from your school, from your teacher, from God knows who is you're a failure. You'll never make anything out of your life. 
You'll never amount to anything in your life, and that's been programmed into you from here. I don't know where it came from. You don't know where it came from. Think back who it might have came from. Maybe it came from your mother or your father. Maybe it came from somebody in your family. Maybe it came from a school teacher. Maybe it came from a, from a policeman. God knows where. Maybe it came from a boss, the first boss. Whoever said it said deep inside of you there was a root that went sinking itself into the subconscious tunnels of, the, of your mind saying you're a failure and every time that you try in some way to figure out what the heck, why can't I, why can't I ever make anything right? Why can't I account to, um, amount to anything? Why, why can't I do this? Why can't I be successful? Why am I always failing? Because you're programmed to fail. You're programmed to fail. And until that programming is driven out of that subconscious mind, you'll never change. The subconscious mind is programmed that you cannot make it, and it will see that you don't. <coughs> that's why what Jesus Christ speaks of, that's why it is so important when he says to you, seek first the kingdom. Enter within yourself. The kingdom of God is within you. Make that change within yourself so that all of this can be flushed away and all that is new can come in and you're... And then what is to stop you? If I just said, if, if Reverend Kennedy says, oh, they say they're gods and all of this stuff, Jesus Christ is the one who said you're God. And just think to yourself, instead of I'm a sinner, instead of I'm a failure, instead of I can't do this and I can't do that and I can't do the other thing, if you close your eyes and just say to yourself, I am God, I am God. I am God. And then look up and say, what in the world could possibly defeat you or your life now? Nothing. But once you find out that I am and God are one and the same thing, then what do you need the system for? What do you need the organization for? What do you need the religions for? And that's what scares them. They're not in this to set you free. They're in this to structure themselves as the great controller of your life. In many, sickness is coded in here. It's hard to be well when the computer constantly says you feel lousy. I, I, I sometimes, I get, you know, between this and sometimes work and everything, I get to the point where I say to myself, and, geez, I'm tired, I feel... And I'm really not. But it's all coded, it's all put deep into the computer, and it's telling me, hey, you're sick. You don't feel good. You feel lousy. Where's it coming from? It's coming from, I think, stuff we put in ourselves. Lonely people. Many people are very lonely. They don't have any friends. But you know what? You've got programmed deep in here. Don't trust anybody. Everybody's out to really take you for what they can get. Mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. Watch them. Always keep your... Always keep your eye over your shoulder. Nobody cares about you. Nobody ever did anything for you. Nobody's ever going to do anything for you. You're going to have to do for yourself. And all of that is programmed here. And you become a very lonely person. Yeah. So, so you've got to rise among, above the programming. Because you have to understand something. The subconscious is the great creator. The problem is it's going to create exactly what it is programmed to create. That's what meant by Paul when he says, I thank God through Jesus Christ, which is the higher mind. With the mind, which is the lower programming, or, or the higher programming, I serve God. But with the flesh, which is the lower programming, I serve the law of sin, which is the emotion. So that's the bad part. What's the good part? The good part is you can remove the bad programs. Okay? You can open this up. You can remove the bad programs in the subconscious. You allowed the negative programming to get in, now you can allow the negative programming to get out. That's the good part. That's why this works. That's why if you'll only get off your rear end, get out of that couch, come down here, and thumb your nose at the system, thumb your nose at the religions, thumb your nose at the churches, open yourself to the story of Christ, open to yourself to what he tried to get you to understand, then you'll come to the place where the, the programming will change. Then you'll come to the place where the subconscious will receive the flow of that reprogramming to get in that which is new. And the chief culprit to this whole thing is a four-letter word, fear. Even to the point 
that you have never heard a religious person discuss your mind. You have gone to church all of your life. You've never heard a pastor. You've never heard a minister. You've never heard a priest. They never discuss your mind. It's off limits. In fact, they say God is in my heart. They always point here. Not to the center. That's off limits. They're afraid of it. And in fact, they'll tell you that if you go into the realm of your own mind, you'll open up devils. That's what they'll tell you. Because it's fear. And you know why that is? Because the negativity of religion and Christianity has programmed people to be afraid of themselves. Where are you ever going if you're afraid of yourself? If you can't love yourself, if you can't... And do you know what this Reverend Kennedy said on television? That this humanism, this New Age stuff, is nothing but worship of self. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> finally say, hey, I am something. Look at me strut. <laughs> well, you should see me when I go to Key West with the nurse. I suck this in for two weeks. Walk around the pool. Say to the nurse, I gotta go to the men's room. <laughs> I go in the men's room and <sighs> get another, you know, suck it in or stretch. Cause I am something. See, that's the that's the beauty of all this. Jesus Christ never came to tell this world how great he was. He came to this world to say how great you are. And that's why he said, You are the light of the world. The kingdom's within you. And you know what Jesus said? Hey, Santa. He said, the things that I've done, you can do. You can do better than me. And I say, you ain't kidding. He never flew in a plane. Right. He never went to a Jimmy Buffett concert. What are you talking about? He didn't know anything. That is a guy I could follow off the end of a cliff because Jesus Christ was the guy that said, hey, I'm here to put that light on in you and show everybody the God who dwells within you. Don't, don't hang on me. Don't pray to me. Don't ask me. You go right to him. You got carte blanche. Go right to the source. And the source, he said, is in you. That's what will set you free. That's why this meditation is so important because of all of this fear, this culprit that comes out of your family, out of your circumstances. And what you've got to do to start the reprogramming, and next week we're going to do, we'll finish this off with reprogramming the mind, but what you've got to do is you've got to turn away uh, from the thoughts that have been coming from the outside. As Jesus said, take no thought, and you've got to start turning to the thoughts that are coming from the inside. And you do that in meditation. And you know, whether you use Kitaro or Halpern or whether you use Aum or Buddha or whatever you do, start listening to that which is within and no longer be listening to that which is without. As it says in Jeremiah 6, get your ears circumcised. Cut away all of that that's coming in because that's what has caused you that feeling. That's why it's made you miserable. And when you do that, then you'll realize with Matthew 5, 14, Jesus Christ said, you are the light of the world. And that's what you change your negative thoughts of I'm a sinner to I am God. And you'll freak out everybody upstairs because they can't understand what you're talking about. There's only one mind. There's only one spirit. Let me just, we're done, I promise you. But let me just tell you something. <laughs> The creative power of the universe is inside of it. It's an eternal power. There is only every book that has ever been written has been written by the same author. Every building that has ever been built has been built by the same engineer. The creation happened because the conscious mind of the builder, the conscious mind of the engineer, did not prevent it by negative subconscious programming. And so that which was within was able to explode in a monument. But it's all the same because they have nothing more inside of them than you have, except they had the luxury of not having negativity programmed in to say they couldn't, they couldn't, they couldn't. In fact, they probably had somebody that was doing just the opposite, saying, yes, you can, yes, you can, yes, you can, yes, you can. And when it came to that point, they knew, yes, I can. And that's the secret. That's what comes from meditation. Reprogramming deeper than yourself. 
universal mind goes to everyone. What this means, now let me finish, this is the last two lines. What this means is that your experience in life is exactly what you are convinced of. Your experience in this life is exactly what you are convinced of. You're convinced of it. You've made up your mind about it. If everything is falling apart, you're convinced that this is the way it has to be. If everything is not working, if you hate your job, if you hate the people around you, you're convinced of that because that's the way you've been programmed. But it can be changed. And when you no longer feel that way, you'll no longer be limited to that job you hate. You'll no longer be limited to those circumstances that are causing you all those problems. You'll no longer be limited to those sicknesses that have been plaguing you. There's no reason for it. You say, I desire success. I want to be healthy. But the subconscious programming knows otherwise. See what I'm telling you? You're saying consciously, this is what I want, but subconsciously what's going to manifest itself is just the opposite. Because you don't even know that everything you've taken in from those who thought they were helping you have created this horror. The Garden of Eden is filled with weeds. Huh? And so, what does it say? It says you have been made caretaker of the vineyard. You have been made to prune the vineyard. Now you can get into the vineyard and you can watch the vineyard and you can start to plant trees and you can start to plant the tree of life. And all of these things will start to grow in the vineyard and you'll start to be a completely different person because that subconscious has been filled with failure, 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 and it is locked in by the conditions that you had no control over. But now, if nothing else you take from this place, you go out of here knowing, yes, I can change it. Yes, I can make it different. And you get your rear end in here on Tuesday night, and you hit this floor, and you start doing all, and you start playing serious with this God who lives within you, and you see that gate, and you'll see that lock, that, that double bolted lock rust and fall off, and you'll see that gate swing open, and you'll see all of that garbage which has been hurting you all of your life start to stream out of that graveyard and instead of that you'll start to see trees flowing the desert shall bloom like a rose and all of these horrible barren things will be turned into springs of water and all of that which has held you back and made you a lesser person will be gone and you'll be motivated in this new age into the essence of what God has meant for you to be that's what you got to do and the only one who is able and capable of doing it is you Okay, thank you very much. And we'll, uh, oh. That's not bad. Get a round of applause here on Sunday morning. Not bad. All right. Uh, next week we'll, uh, we'll finish this off on reprogramming the mind and how we reprogram it. Um, okay, thank you for being with us. Joan will come up.